The Home Secretary has arrived in Rwanda to negotiate a new treaty to house migrants set there from the UK. It comes after James cleverly announced his plan to cut migration, but there are fears that new requirements could hit staffing in health and social care. Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick is stuck in Westminster uh, while his boss has arrived in Kigali. Um, Mr Jenrick, how much more money are we going to throw at this failed Rwanda scheme? Well, good morning. We think it's incredibly important that we stop the boats. That's what the public expects us to do, and that's what we're setting out to achieve. And we've had some success. The numbers arriving on small boats has reduced by a third this year, when the numbers in similar situations across Europe are rising. In Italy, they've increased by almost 100%. But it isn't enough. We've got to go further. And that's why the Rwanda scheme matters. It's about creating a very powerful deterrent, so that if you come here illegally on a small boat, you know that you'll be detained and you'll be removed either back home, if it's safe to do so, or to a safe third country like Rwanda. I hope that on the strength of the treaty that we're signing later today and the emergency legislation we're going to take through Parliament shortly, we'll be able to get the scheme up and running very soon and it will have the effect that's desired and people mm. will be deterred from coming on these unnecessary and illegal journeys once and for all. It's already uh, been ruled out by the Supreme Court. So what changes? Well, the treaty is going to make a number of very substantive changes to the arrangement that we have with Rwanda, which directly answers all of the questions that the Supreme Court had. So uh, without going into all of the details, it will alleviate the judges' concerns about the arrangement and then enable Parliament in the law that we're going to pass to say that Rwanda is safe, the arrangement can proceed and we can get on and implement it, which is ultimately what the public want us to do because they're sick of seeing the small boat arrivals. It is doing damage to our country and we've got to stop it. We also know that legal migration was at a record high, over 700,000 last year. Uh, the Prime Minister says in his article in The Sun today, he says, um, um, referring to the Brexit promise to control migration, he says, too often politicians have not been willing to take the hard decision to deliver on those promises. When he refers to politicians not taking the hard decisions over the last few years, which politicians is he referring to, do you think? Well, look, the, the big reform that we've done as a government in recent years was leaving the European Union. And that gives us yeah. uh, a unique situation within Europe where we do have control of the levers of migration. We now have to use them. But migration went up. That is what the Prime Minister is saying, is that he, the Home Secretary and I, are now... We have the levers and we're going to use them. Right. And we're going to implement now the biggest set of reforms to our legal migration system for a long time, probably in my lifetime, and it will see a reduction of at least 300,000 in the number of people coming to this country. And that's very important because it helps us to build a more productive sure. economy in which businesses invest in domestic workers, where we help people off welfare and into the workforce rather than relying on overseas labour. Yeah. And we can build a more socially uh, inclusive okay. and united country when it's very difficult to do that with such large numbers of people coming into our country every year. So for all those reasons, this is the right approach and the reforms that. that we're putting in place will make a big difference. I understand that, but with respect, Mr Jenrick, you absolutely didn't answer my question because hmm. I asked you which politicians the Prime Minister was referring to who didn't make the tough decisions since 2016. In the House of Commons last week, um, you told the House of Commons, my plan would have been brought to the House of Commons before last Christmas if I could have done your plan to reduce migration. Who stopped you bringing a plan for more restrictions last Christmas in the last year? Was it your former boss, the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman? Did she stop you bringing those plans? Well, I'm not going to relitigate the, the debates we've had across government, but the most important thing is that we have now agreed a major right. overhaul of our legal migration system, the biggest one for many years, and it's going to have an immediate effect. Sure. We're going to implement this uh, as soon as we can in the months ahead, and the public will see, and that's ultimately what they care about, the public wants to see delivery, they'll see the numbers starting yeah. to fall substantially. Fine. So I feel as though you've now not answered both of my questions. I asked you which politicians didn't make the tough decisions and you haven't answered. And I've asked you who stopped you bringing forward proposals in the last year and you haven't answered. It's all very well tipping up with a new plan today when migration is at a record high. What people want to know 
is why weren't the decisions made in the last year? If it wasn't Suella Braverman, who stopped you as Immigration Minister from taking the tough decisions you wanted to take? And that's not relitigating the past. It's just asking you to be honest with us about what's gone wrong. Well, I think I, I have tried to, to explain what's happened. We left the European Union. We took back control of the levers of legal migration. Decisions were made which did lead to an increase in the number of people coming to our country. But the great virtue of the system we have now is we can respond to those trends and take action yeah. and create the system that the public expect. But and you've that's said exactly in the, what we're but, doing today. But you've said very clearly in the last week that you were stopped from making the decisions you wanted to make in the last year since you've been immigration minister. Was it the Treasury who stopped you? Was it the business department who stopped you? Or was it the prime minister who stopped you? You can't say these things and then, then not tell us what's actually happened. Well, as you know from your long experience in government, these are complex decisions. They do have to be agreed across government. And we have taken the time to get this right because there are impacts on the economy, there are impacts on okay. public services and on communities. Okay. And I respect and understand the reasons why my colleagues across government would want to think deeply about the changes we're making because they're such substantial changes. We have now reached that agreement. I'm really pleased that we I have. Understand. And these are major changes which will have a big impact in the years ahead. So just one more question, because you referred to my experience in government. If you make decisions like this, which are complex and difficult and could have consequences for business or for the care sector or the NHS, mm -hmm. you put together a detailed set of analysis to know what the impact is, and that's called an impact assessment. Will you promise mm. to publish the Home Office impact assessment of the reforms announced yesterday so we can see your workings and what the impact you believe will happen in the care sector or more widely to the economy? Will you publish that impact assessment? Well, we have been working with independent organisations uh, that support government, like the Migration Advisory Committee, and they do publish their reports. And so a number of the things we've set out this week, such sure. as the ending of the shortage occupation list yeah. and its replacement with a much smaller, tighter uh, set of occupations sure. whereby employers can bring people into the country. But how about the Home Office's the, impact assessment? The, well, I'm, I'm explaining that there, there are documents that you can look at if you want to, to read into this. And... We've taken yeah. these decisions. No, but I'm asking about the Home Office's impact assessment. Will you, publish, will you publish the Home Office's impact assessment of these proposals? Yes or no? Uh, we don't plan to, to publish anything at, at this time, but I would point okay. to anyone who's interested in this to the documents that have been produced by the Migration Advisory Group, which is our advisor on this, and they've set out in a lot of detail the arguments for many of the changes that we're mm. making today. The only and thing I'd say, Mr Jenrick, if you were confident in these reforms, you'd publish the impact assessment. Well, I am confident well, in then these publish reforms. It. Well, because, I mean, if you want to ask me further questions about the impact of them, I'm here on your programme. I'm happy to answer them. But well, I'll tell you, are, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one example. You the fact that you are going to stop care workers who come from abroad to this country bringing in dependents, we have spoken to somebody who runs a whole care group who says more businesses will fail, more care homes will close. It's a disaster. That's his impact assessment. Is that reflected in yours? Well, I understand his concern, but that's not our, our, exp our experience. What we think will happen is it will lead to a reduction of about 20% of the number of foreign care workers coming into the UK. We hope that those places can be filled by British workers, and the Department for Health has a plan to do that, a 10-year workforce plan for social care backed by £2 billion of investment. We don't think that uh, asking care workers not to bring dependents to the UK will have a material impact. There okay. are other countries that right. do the same. And there's a lot of people who want to come to our country to work yep. in care, and that's generally a good thing. 20% is quite a cut. Quite Thank a you cut. very much indeed, Thank you, Robert Jenrick. Jenrick. Thank Appreciate you. It. One in five care One, workers. I know, and what happens to the care sector if you lose 20, you know, all those, all those yep. workers? I mean...